everybody and welcome to today's video. In today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing pretty much everything that's not LED to LED. I've got some LED fog lights to go in. Uh, we've got some LED headlights to go in as well. They're the night eye ones. Plus, I have already got LED side lights, as you can see, but I don't know what it is. They both came out of the same packet, but they're slightly different shades of white on either side. I'll show you that in a second. That's the main focus. I have got some uh, chameleon tint on these as well, which I will eventually get off. Uh, but the main thing is, is to change them. So I'm gonna show you how to get to all them. In a previous video, we did change some LED fogs on a different car on Paul's FN2, the black one. But we took the bumper off, mainly to show you the um, how to get the bumper off, basically, because people wanted to know that but we're gonna try and do it through the wheel arch instead today. Anyway, battery's going dead. I can feel the heat from these. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's, get it, let's get it sorted. So I don't know if you can notice on camera, it doesn't show very well, but they are a slightly different color. That's a bit more blue on that side, like compared to that one being a bit whiter, which is weird. Like I said, they came out the same packet. So I've got the same bulbs in the number plate uh, LEDs as well, so I'm going to swap those so I can show you how to get to them as well and Put them in the front see if they're more similar shall we say so these are the bulbs that I'll be using to do the replacement. We've got the night eye uh, main beam a uh, dip beam should I say um, Headlight bulbs. I haven't got any bulbs for high beam uh, Just simply because I don't feel like I need Sorry, it's quite windy today. I need to change my high beam ones to these. Oops, get that strap out of the way as well. Because I could see well enough with high beam on with normal headlights. And who's gonna be looking at me when I've got my high beams on? Nobody. I'm gonna be trying to like not shine them in anybody's face, face whatsoever. So I don't feel like I need to upgrade those to have a matching yet. Fog light bulb wise, we've got, they are quite cheap. Um, you could tell they're some kind of Chinese make, but I really wanted them because I wanted to be, be able to have red fog lights. See, like if I'm going into a show or a meet or something like that, I think that'd look pretty cool. So we're gonna try that, see what it's like, see if we can set it to red, see if it looks quite cool. If they, if they break after a bit, they break after a bit. End of the day, they were really, really cheap, but something I just wanted to try. And then we've got the side light LED bulbs as well to change. Headlight bulbs are H7, if you were wondering. For the fog light bulbs, they are H11. Yep, H11 for the fog light bulbs. Um, and I'll, I'll find out for the side lights for you. But yeah, let's just start with the fog lights first because they're the most difficult, why not? Right, so we're gonna be doing the driver's side first. I've got it jacked up, got the stand on there, all ready to go. Wheels off, pop that aside. Uh, I'm just saving my wheel nuts in. Always have something to put your, your, your hardware in. We were throwing these pans away. I just thought, well, why don't I just take the handles off and I can I can catch hardware and stuff in it. Useful. Back to what we're doing with those. The reason why I did this side first is because I don't think anybody, any other FN2 owners are having this, but under heavy braking at like a lower speed, I've been getting like a whirring noise and I can feel grittiness in the pedal when I'm doing it. I'll slow down, it'll just go ooh, like something grinding up against something. Um, I've had a look, I can't really see any score marks, if anything, this is like a slight, slight line at the edge of this, but I don't know if that's just not where the pad's catching all the way. I've undone the bottom bolt on the caliper, lifted it up, taken the pads out, um, just brushed everything down, make sure there's no crap or anything in there. What's good about the PBS pads is, is they're in two separate pieces on the pad with a groove down the middle, so that lets like excess brake dust and, and heat out. Um, I've cleared all that like canal, we'll call it, out, so there's no like brake dust or rubbish in there. Popped them back in, front and back. Fingers crossed that solves the issue. My guess is that something was stuck in there, grinding up against it, so we'll see what we can do. But I'll update you on that if you're having that issue yourself. Now, to get into this arch, you have to take some of this trim off first. I've done that in other videos as well, but I will show you in case you've not seen them ones or if you're new to the channel. If you look under here, you've got, this is where the trim starts going underneath the car. There's one clip there, and then there's another clip behind that guard there. They're the two that you're gonna need to undo to get that off. 
pin remover tool is probably the best thing for something like this, but I left mine at my house, so I just use the screwdriver. Another big tip, always have spare clips. Nine times out of ten, you're breaking. Ball ache. There we go. That's <laughs> the other piece of it. Go back in there. Jobs are good. Eh? Ready to go back in. Alright, so now that should detach out of there. Pull the back guard out. That comes up now. This should just pop out now. You kinda gotta be naughty but nice. Oh, okay. There we go. Now you want to be careful when you're popping these out because eventually when you get to up here there's a place where there's meant to be a clip. I might have broke it last time because you're popping out, popping out. One's meant to have a clip, you break the bracket off. So be careful when you get to the top um, of this trim. Yeah, I've already brought that bracket so it's absolutely fine. <laughs> so this one here, so you're meant to take that clip out first. God, I need to clean in here. So clip wise, to take this arch lining off on this front bit, ones that I can see, there's one here that's gonna need taken out. There's another one up here, just there, that is gonna need taken out. I don't think that one will need to, the one up here will need taken out because that's to hold the trim on, that's the bracket I said it's already broken. That one doesn't have a clip, so that can, be, that can just be left. I can't see many more. Let's just crack on and see how we get. See now this is important, those clips are the ones that were um, in the underneath the bumper trick to take this off and that's the size of the one that's just been in this arch. There's two size clips that are used on these cars that I've noticed. So I've just got a bag of each, short ones and long ones, just in case. Well that clip's destroyed anyway so we'll put a fresh one in there. See I think this top one is still clipped into the bodywork so I'm going to have to take that off as well. Don't hit me in the face, don't hit me in the face, don't hit me in the face. Ugh. Oh, that's the piece of the bracket that came off. <laughs> There's one in back here that's part of the under tray, but I might have to do that as well, just to make it easier. I'm not gonna be like, I could probably do a lot less clips, still get, but I'd rather take more out and make the job easier. A bit of extra effort can go a long way. As I've found working with cars. There we go. Oh, look at that. We can see. Oh, I said we can see there's a massive reservoir down here. That's just gonna be so hard to show you guys. But up there, I don't know if you can see, up there will be the bulb where the uh, fog light is. I'll just come out so you know where I'm actually looking into that corner in there so it's up here i'm gonna try and reach up through there but disconnect the bulb out on the wire bring the wire down change the bulb pop it back in jobs are good in that's so ridiculous right so you won't believe what i've actually done we kind of i think i found a different way without having to take any of this off I've took this trim off as normal, as if I was taking the bumper off, undone the screw that goes in here, and then the rest of these are clips. Now, I've pulled, pulled it out all the way up towards the grill, and I literally, for the life of me, from underneath, could not get the grip on the clip enough to push, to push it in to release it uh, on the bulb. I pulled this out instead. Sorry, I'm just making sure I'm not catching any of this trim. And then as I pulled this out, I don't know if you'll be able to see where that barcode is. There we go, where the barcode is. Under there is where the bulb is. I literally just reached down, pressed the clip, pulled it straight out. That's all I need to do now, is remove the bulb. Anti-clockwise twist, that should disconnect the bulb. One thing you do need to be careful of with this method though, is if you do have a Mugen uh, grill, mine's actually mounted onto this bumper. So I'm popping these clips out, happy as Larry, and then I heard a little noise coming into here. So I need to be careful, make sure I can put this all back in and not snap anything with the uh, connections to the grill. That could have been costly. But I don't think it matters, it matters which side or which bulb I've taken out, it should all connect 
symmetrically. You can see here that the layouts are completely different. You've got the standard bulb there with the filament in. And this one is laid out in different partitions because I'm guessing each one will be different colours. So if you have more than once, it should technically blend into a white. But my main focus is I can have white, but I can also have red. So that's what I'm trying to keep in mind. I might keep hold of this just in case I do need to replace them, put them back in. So all this trim's back on here now. I've just popped a couple of fresh clips where there wasn't any. Well, that one broke and we took it out. There wasn't one there, they're in. Definitely not gonna come off now. So the wheel's back on, everything's down, back how it was. I'm gonna do the other side afterwards, but I'm gonna do all on one side first so you can see a comparison of the two. So we're gonna move on to the standard headlight bulb now. I'm sorry, they're really dirty, so you can't really see that well through them, but there's a bulb here, which is the side light bulb, I do believe. And then there's the headlight bulb, not above it, that's probably your main beam here. Headlight bulbs in this circle cut out section here and then that's just your indicator bulb I'm not touching that at the minute so that's the one that we're going to be changing if you come back up above you've got two bits you can get into with the just like twist lock caps you've got this one here which is the one for the side light and main beam and then you've got this one here which is for the headlight and we're going to be doing this one first uh, they, there's people that have said how do they get to them because they're quite difficult to get to the only thing that I can suggest is use just just try and get your hands down there other than trying to take things out you can try to take this battery out if that's in the way for you because you because the cap is there for side lights and it's there for the headlights so that is kind of deep in it but I'm still gonna try and get down there and do it by hand it's gonna be hard to try and film this whilst I'm doing it. In fact, I'll, let's see if we can get it off. Just this bit and then I can show you just where we are. Oh, this is actually a, a sec not a second hand, but an off-brand one of these because for some reason once when I replaced the headlight bulb, I must not put it on properly and it just flew away. <laughs> so I had to get a plate replacement of that. Now in there, that's where the bulb is. There's like a metal clasp thing that you've got to undo to get the bulb out. I don't know if I can get a better angle for you there. It's kind of like hooked into a... Uh... There you go. You've got a... The metal clasp thing is hooked into a hook. You've got to push inwards and pull to the left and then it pops out. And that releases the bulb. And then you just get a little twist. Oh, it feels looser than it should be. I'll just show you when I've got it out. <laughs> so you've got to pull the plug off of the bulb first. Then you can pull the bulb out like so. Now I have made a fatal error with these, which is when, you meant, when you're taking old bulbs out, you are meant to wear gloves, because if you touch the glass with your bare hands, apparently the oils from your skin can make the life of the bulb premature. That's something that I forgot. I am going to keep this bulb just in case something goes wrong with these bulbs. I've got I've got spare bulb basically, but the difference is the difference is with these ones they've got like a this bit down here is like a fan, so I don't know how so I don't know how they are going to fit um, in. Hopefully there's enough room for that behind it. But we'll just swap it over. This this actually is supplied with gloves with like cloth gloves, so I'm going to put them on, pop this in, and see what the difference is. Definitely gonna keep these if I ever do anything like this again. So now, as you can see with these bulbs, they don't connect straight into the back of the bulb as it would do with the previous ones. The instructions actually state you have to disconnect this power section here. Well, it's like a ring. You connect this ring up, which is like a section that's on a normal bulb. Lock that in, into place, or we'll put the clasp over it. Then you feed this on, then you put the power on. Let's get our bash and see how easy it is. Right, so I've managed to get it in. That separate piece that I was talking about that you have to put in first, it's quite a thick piece compared to the thin metal one that comes on a normal bulb. The like metal wire clasp that's meant to go over it and go into a hook, where I was having loads of trouble trying to force that into that hook, but I managed to eventually get it in. And then it just went straight in, popped the uh, wire into the normal connection, just did a test run and it works 
spot on. So I'm going to put this cap on and then I'll, uh, I'll just swap the side light uh, from one of the number plate ones and that's pretty much all we need to worry about. Now when it comes to the number plate bulbs, all you need to do is you take off each of these sides here. You know, I've had this off a few times before so I can easily get to it. They are usually near the middle which is these first ones here. Anti-clockwise twist, pull that down, push the clip release. There you go. Oh, it's not even that. I just pull it out. <laughs> there you go. And then on the front, well, it's the same as this. Just pop it in. Sorry, I forgot to show you. This is what these bulbs actually look like. And there's a fan back here, like I mentioned. You can actually hear this whirring when you start the car up to uh, keep this whole system cool. And I will confirm, you can get that cap over the back of it again to make sure it's airtight. No problem at all. Right guys, so this is the comparison. That's obviously loads brighter than that headlight there. Obviously, I will be obviously having this on the lowest dipped uh, setting. That's the fog light now in red you can change that and um, that's the original one that looks really creamy that is pretty much brighter though to be fair um, but i hardly ever use my fog lights so i'm not that bothered but you can change all different colors you can scroll between them. i'll show you with the remote now yeah so using this remote i've got control of different colors i've got flash strobe uh, fade which is like if you, click, you have to point it at it to make it do what you want it to do so phase that really slow color change. Smooth, they go through pretty quickly. Strobe is like it takes a while, but it, it cycles through the colors like that. And then you've got flash, which is quite quickly through the colors. You can select whatever color you want, whenever you want, basically. Um, I like it on red. I think that looks pretty cool in red. What I'll do, that's actually white, but it's quite bluish in real life. It doesn't really show on camera. Um, but when I take that film off, it should make it a lot whiter. Um, and that's probably how I'll run it then. Until if I go to a meet, then I can flip, click it to red before I set off. And then when I turn them on, it should stay red. Every time I've turned the car on, on and off, on and off, having it set to red, it's gone back to red. But I've heard in the past, sometimes it can go automatically to strobe every time you turn them on. Luckily, this has memory and remembers what I've last had it on as a setting. Brilliant. So I'm going to install all the other half now before it gets any darker, but I'm not going to film all that because who wants to see it all again but mirrored. But hopefully you've got the gist of how to do all those different things. It has hopefully been helpful for you if you want to do any of that yourself. So I'm going to end this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I think it looks a lot more modern and a lot meaner with the red as well, but with the white, it looks so much more modern. If you did enjoy this video, if you found it helpful, or if you do like any of my other videos, please like and subscribe to the channel and click the little bell button so it reminds you when a fresh video comes on. And until next time, guys, like I always say, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Oh, <laughs> oh God, nearly fell out.